Hello. We've talked about imaging. Now I'm going to talk about the design and build. So this original design and build is very practical and it's very easy to do and it is somewhat showy, I guess, from a point of view. Um, what I really like is what I call woman curves um, or sexy curves, either one. And this has all of it. And I want to bring this up close so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, girls, we love everything that is between your ears and below your sternum. But we also like booty and booby. And curves is one of the things we really love. It's no mistake that a, um, a fitness chain is called curves. And it's about the women. Women have curves, period. End of story. Deal with it. Uh, so... I like lots of curving, rounding edges on my designs. And by doing the tweeter and the mid-range separately like this, it allows me to have these rounding, curving lines that I really love. And I think they're just sexy. Just end of the story, they're just sexy. Not to mention, they also have the appeal of looking like something that's beneath the cover that's pushing up and out. And I'm not talking anything sexual, I'm just talking about something that's like, um, something that wasn't there that something uh, suddenly appears and when people first see these pods they're like oh cool you got speakers there and then they start looking a little bit closer and they're like oh wow these are so cool I love this and I've had more than dozens of people uh, do this where they where they feel the rounding edges here and they're like wow that's really cool that turned out really well and then I tell them you know based on what what where it is in the uh, build uh, how long ago I built them? I said, and this last uh, about a month ago, I had a show, and this guy was like, "Wow, those are really cool." And I go, "Yeah, I built these about seven years ago." And he says, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "They they look amazing." And I go, "Well, they 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 did." He says, "Oh, I don't see how they don't look bad. How they look bad?" And I go, "Well, they've got cracks and stuff like that in different places." He goes, "Yeah, but seven years." And I'm all, "Yeah, but they need to look uh, perfect every time." So. Here we go. It's always in groups. Um, so I'll be building these out of fiberglass and a type of cloth that is similar to t-shirt material. Um, it's actually from a sheet uh, that I have. No, not the dirty ones. And um, it's, a, it's something called um, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, beach, B-E-E-C-H. And it's a type of cloth that stretches in both directions evenly. It actually stretches in six directions, which is really nice. So it is like a traditional shirt where it'll stretch in all directions. The difference is, is this stuff stretches way better than t-shirt or grow cloth does. Grow cloth and t-shirt material will have a tendency that when you stretch it, it creates these big wrinkles. See how these wrinkles are forming? Beach doesn't do that. Unfortunately, it's exceptionally expensive to try and build speaker pods and stuff out of, but I have beach sheets on my bed and I've got enough of them that I can spare one. So this is gonna get, in addition to the fiberglass on this side and the beach material, it's also gonna get on this build I think I figured out how to beat time. And on this side here, I'm gonna sand out these ribs some, and I'm gonna lay fiberglass in between them. Not just resin. Resin's just gonna crack and break eventually. But I'm actually gonna lay uh, sheets of fiberglass through here, which is gonna strengthen this panel. And since there's room in here, so there's no uh, worry of it striking anything, I just have to be careful about this edge where these teeth come up. Um, but in these areas here, so that when I lay fiberglass on the other side, these are gonna have holes drilled in them. I'm gonna build, drill four holes in each one of these sections here. And then I'm gonna push fiberglass through so that when, uh, and then resin it on the other side so that when I lay fiberglass on this other edge before creating these pods, because you have to have something for the pods to mount to, 
Uh, you you always lay fiberglass down on the one side first, and then you you do your your sheeting and everything on the other side. So that way, this has something to grab onto. So it's going to have fiberglass push through, and then it's going to create kind of like um, rivets, if you will. And it's going to allow it to be able to push through. Now, you could use traditional rivets, like metal rivets, and go right through the plastic riveting. And I've seen people try that before, and it usually fails. And the reason is, is because this is plastic, but um, on this type of plastic, it's also extremely flexible. And you can see that when I, I'm, I'm pushing on this one here, you can see it bends over. And if you push it enough, it'll actually fold over on itself and, and it creates a white crease you can see there. So you can only push on it so much before it starts to uh, deform permanently. So that is now permanently deformed. I'm not worried about it because I'm not going to use these originals. I actually have another set of these uh, for my car that I bought off of uh, Terry Cotta when, after his car died. RIP. So I'm going to have fiberglass on this side here and then a fiberglass main body and then this upper beauty body will go on top of it. And it will bring those two pieces together and the biggest place of failure that I have for these things failing isn't in this area here. It's actually at these edges. And you can see that here. So this is just a minor deformity here. And what happened in this area here is this was actually, a lot of this was actually um, some Bondo. But this, is, this has fiberglass that goes all the way to the edge. But I think what happened was is in the process of sanding this down and getting it so it would uh, trip into this into this edge here, this rounding edge, that it uh, lost a lot of its fiberglass integrity and allowed it to chip away. And where I live, um, it gets extremely hot. So hot, cold, hot, cold. Now my car is garaged, but at car shows, it's not garaged by any stretch of the imagination. And it gets hot. It gets so hot that I modified my hood so that I could put two 9-inch fans in it. And then um, I have ducting that's in the upper portion of my carbon fiber hood. And so it sucks air in and forces that cooler air down onto the engine area, pushing air underneath the car and out. And this kind of, th this really helps. I thought about actually putting fans underneath the car and having them push it up because heat rises. Uh, that didn't ever work out because uh, the car's lowered and there is no room underneath to do nine inch fans Even two six inch fans wouldn't have made much of a difference um, I figured out because I, I put a couple I put one of the nine inch fans underneath the car and uh, pushed it up under like a, 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 a Surface so that the air was pushing up and even with the engine off You could hardly feel anything coming up if anything at all even with the engine off So it didn't make much of a difference but I knew that doing the nine inch fan, since the, uh, I'm trying to cool the alternator and the battery down the most. And anything else is just uh, gravy. Um, Cause I have had my car get so hot at car shows, running the car for eight or nine hours that one of the mat, one time the battery melted down. Just happens. I've had a couple of my friends tell me the same story with their car, that their batteries melted down. It doesn't matter what brand it is, it just eventually gets, too hot over time and you got to remember when you're driving the car there's a lot of airflow com coming into the engine bay because of the forced air coming through but anyway so yeah you can see when I really force it this has failed this is totally failed you can see there's one piece over here it's attached and this is here and it just didn't it didn't didn't hold up the test of time so by putting in these uh, holes through here um, this is a trick that is as old as time. Nope, everybody's done this over, over the course of time. And I didn't do it on this because it was actually thick enough fiberglass. I didn't think it was going to uh, last. And when I built these, these weren't designed to be built and held for as long as they did. So I was surprised they lasted seven years. And the only reason I'm replacing them is because the passenger side one looks like hell. The driver side one if you uh, hold it like this, because this is uh, the dash line where my uh, index finger is, it's hardly noticeable. And this upper corner that's sticking out that's uh, 
cracked and broken, you can't even see it from outside the car because of the way the windshield has this black edge that runs along it. But I know it's there, so it bothers me. So we'll be doing it that way. And then uh, in addition, I, as I was talking about the sexy lens that I love, I'm probably gonna do away with it because I wanna take these speakers and I wanna flush them into a countersunk pod and the same with the tweeter. I'm gonna try and bring some of the tweeter lines in, but it's probably not gonna be as prevalent as before. And I'm gonna have a grill going across this with a black grill cloth or something of that nature. I wouldn't mind being able to see the speaker just a little bit through the grill cloth or through the uh, grill that's on there. But I have grill material that I'm probably gonna use uh, that's similar to the grill that goes in the, uh, in, in the uh, front section of the uh, hood of the scoop of the car um, but uh, ultimately these speakers are going to be completely enclosed and then I just pull the grill out change out the speakers if I ever have to in seven years by the way these power base speakers seven years I replaced one tweeter and one mid and they weren't on the boat both on the same side one was on the driver's side one was on the passenger side I think the tweeter was actually on the driver's side as I recall um, but the uh, yes yeah, so that would put the mid on the uh, passenger side in seven years and that's going to countless shows and um, playing the speakers exceptionally loud and uh, in that seven years I've gone through two three processors I had my audio control or what we affectionately refer to as noise control in the industry and then I had my, my mini DSP and now I have my Alpine and uh, Powerbase has, has got a new uh, uh, processor that I might consider down the road just because I would love to have it. Um, but it's got to meet my standards of what, what I needed to do. But their speakers and amplifiers have always met my standards. Um, I consider these components, this is part of the 2XL 60.3 uh, three-way components. And there's a six and a half inch mid-base in the door that you can kind of see from here. Um, it's the smaller of the, of the three uh, big drivers in the door. It's the only mid-base drivers I have in the car. There's no point in putting mid-base drivers in the rear of the car because I don't sit back there. And mid-base is all about the, uh, the listener. So anyway, so we're going to see how this turns out. And I'll be uh, pu putting up more videos as time goes on. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you.